Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at the World Happiness Report, which is a data set uh, containing a number of attributes about different countries and a happiness score uh, for each one. So we'll be trying to predict the happiness score based on a series of features. Let's get started. So we'll start by importing our usual libraries and for the sake of uh, speed I'm just going to paste them in here. We'll get NumPy for uh, linear algebra, pandas for data processing, a map uh, pyplot and seaborn for uh, data visualization. We'll get the min-max scalar and the train test split for more pre-processing and linear regression uh, as our model. So I'll start uh, here, getting started. And let's just load in our data. So pandas.readcsv and we can get the, you can see there's five different data sets. We'll use the 2019 data set, uh, which is the most recent, which makes the most sense. So we'll paste that in. Oh, we have to specify, that's called data, and data. So we'll run this, like that. And here's our data set. So we can see right away that what's very nice about this data set is everything is numerical, right? The country or region is not uh, giving us any uh, useful information in predicting the score, so we're just going to drop that. But uh, everything else is is numbers. So there's not a lot of, like we won't have to do any encoding on this data set. It'll be very uh, simple to just feed it into our model. And another thing we notice is that it only has 156 rows. So uh, a simple model should do just fine here. Uh, rather rather nine columns is really what we care about. It has very few features relatively so a simple model should do just fine. And our rank here uh, is actually not giving us any useful information because score is basically the rank, right? If the score is high the rank is low, if the score is low the rank is high. The rank is just an ordering of the scores. So rank and country can be dropped from the data set. So data.drop uh, overall rank and country or region. Whoops. Okay. And we want to specify that it's the column axis, axis 1, and say in place is true. Let's run that, check it again. Now we can see everything is fully numeric and we can actually get some data visualization going. Try to see the correlations between the features using a heat map. So uh, we'll specify the figure size. I think uh, 14 by 12 should be good. And then use Seaborn's heat map. And we, the, what we'll pass in is data.core, which is the correlation matrix for the features in data and then plot.show. Alright, and actually let's specify a few more things in the heat map. Turn annotations on. And we will specify the min and max values. So negative 1 and 1. Okay. And here we go. So a few things we can note right away is that there are no negative correlations in this data set, which is interesting. Um, but the these guys, these four, are very strongly positively correlated. Right? Uh, score, GDP per capita, social support, and healthy life expectancy are all strong predictors of each other. Right? As, as one goes up, the others do uh, for each one of them. <coughs> Which makes sense because uh, a country with a high happiness rating, which is the score, will most likely also have high values for each of these. Now, uh, freedom to make life choices is also positively correlated, though not as strongly. And perceptions of corruption is, interestingly, also positively correlated. So I'm wondering if a high value of perceptions of corruption uh, actually corresponds to a low level of corruption. Uh, and the generosity 
a feature seems to be the only one that is not a strong, strong, uh, strongly correlated with the uh, with these guys, right? Uh, it is sort of correlated with freedom to make life choices and with perceptions of corruption, although. Okay, so I think this is a pretty good uh, visualization of our data. Let's go ahead and start processing it. So, pre-processing. And this is a very simple data set, so it's probably not going to need much. First of all, we'll check for missing values. So, is null will return a matrix of um, values, true and false values. Anytime there's a missing value, it'll be true. And then we can sum across that to get uh, the count of missing values in every column. And nothing. So this is a very clean data set. No missing values. Nothing to worry about there. And we also want to check the data types, although I'm pretty sure everything is numeric like we saw. All floats. Good to go. So we don't have to worry about that either. Um, I guess then we can start scaling. So we'll scale our data down with a min-max scaler between 0 and 1. So let's make our scalar. Actually, first let's split the data. We don't need to scale y, which is the happiness score, because that's the value we're trying to predict. So it doesn't matter if that's on a, a scale of 0 or 1. Um, so y will be the score column of data, and x will be everything else, uh, data.drop score. <coughs> So now if we take a look at y, it should be just a vector of all the scores, and x will be everything except the score column. So now we can uh, we can scale x with the min-max scalar. Whoops. So we'll make a scalar object called scalar. And then um, we will say x is equal to scalar dot fit transform x. So the saying is um, we're going to fit the scalar to x and then transform x into the scaled version of itself. And then we'll pass that back into the original x. And this guy, actually the transformed version, it spits back a numpy array. So to make it easier to visualize, we'll just make we'll turn it back into a data frame. And we'll specify that the columns of that data frame will be the original columns of X. We'll have to respecify them. So we'll run that, take another look at X. And now it's like it was, but everything has been scaled between 0 and 1, making it very easy to fit right into our model. So the last thing we're going to do before we start the model is we're going to split the data set between train and test. So for that, we can use the train test split of uh, sklearn, uh, x train x test, y train y test, equals train test split, x y, with the train size of 70%. Since we only have very few training examples here, it's best to give a decently large test set Otherwise, we won't get very good uh, metrics when we're trying to track the uh, performance of our model. So now, uh, training. All right, let's go ahead and train this thing. So make a new model, which will be a linear regression model. And we'll fit it to our train set, uh, Y train. Run that. What? Oh, we never ran this. Okay. Now we'll go. Great. Now, finally, let's get the results. So, here we're going to print, and I'll use an F string uh, to format the string. And we'll just say regression r squared value will be. And then the way to get that is just model.score, passing in the test set here x test, y test. So this should give us a metric of how our model performed. And that's pretty good. This is an R squared value of 0.787. So this is saying that uh, the regression line, the, the data around the, the regression line is pretty closely uh, fit towards 
the, the regression line. Although the line is the thing that's fit. But uh, this uh, can't be 0.9. It, it has a, a ceiling because there's a certain amount of dispersion around the regression line that is accounted for. So, uh, yeah, it looks like our model did pretty well. Um, I know this was a very short episode, but if you like today's episode, make sure you leave a comment in the section below and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.